Hey guys, it's Biggs. Today's kind of special. I'm traveling with my traveling partner here. Riley's with me. And today, we're not even going to be talking about plants today, Riley. What are we going to be talking about? Reptiles. Reptiles? Nice reptiles? Like leopard geckos? Little tiny cute reptiles? No. no? What are we going to be talking about? Poisonous things. <laughs> poisonous things? Well, Dad likes poisonous things. But they're not really poisonous. They'd be more venomous. Well, same thing. No, it's not the same thing. It's totally different, Riley. Maybe we'll see cobras and alligators, and mambas, oh my. But today we're at a, a real special place. It's called the Westman Reptile Gardens. It's just outside of Brandon, Manitoba. The owner, Dave, is, is not available today. He's not here, he has another job in town. But uh, we're gonna take you a quick little tour through here. I'll give you some background on this wonderful place. So come on, let's go. All right, the minute you come here, like it's over the top crazy. We're going right now at this time of year. This season's been a bit of a bust for them and stuff with the, the pandemic and everything that happened. But uh, you know, I know I've known the owners for a long time. So Candy, his wife, let me come in and do a quick little tour for you. They do have several empty cages, but uh, and there, uh, some of the aspects of things are maybe not up to snuff for what they want it to be. So I'm going to try and give you still a nice little tour. The wall of fame behind me. These are all uh, actors or famous people that have come here and visited the gardens over the years. So. There's all sorts of cool memorabilia all around us here, so let's go and take a look. The bite wall is always fun to look at, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. So you see, see what a caiman bite or a reticulated bite. There was the ones with the, the yeah, the guy in Regina, I bet what was it, a recluse spider? <laughs> and these are some of Dave's injuries from his crocodile monitor. The, the crocodile monitor is no longer with us, but lots of fun. Yeah. A nice family friendly cute little animals just like a nice little kitten now, the variety of animals that they have in their collection is outstanding they've got turtles fish lots of the common stuff as well but the outstanding things are really all in the venomous which they have a fair amount but they also have probably one of the world's most impressive collection of crocodilians yes Alligators, caimans, crocodiles, all the really cool big guys. So using the, the standard trariums that you can get at any pet store, they've set up some different things. This is a little milk snake and the ever popular common pet store curly tail lizard. Still a very fascinating animal for watching it for behavior, easy to care for. Some large veiled chameleons. Snails, ground land snails, uh, frog eye gecko, I don't even see it. A nice black and white king snake, crested geckos, some frogs, wolverine frogs, also known as horror frogs. They'll break their own bones to create retractable claws. Oh, doesn't that sound lovely? This is Finn. He's a Florida soft shell turtle, and he's really big. It's probably about 16 inches across his carapace from front to back. This would be similar to what we would have up here as a snapping turtle, but the only difference being is their carapace or shell is soft and malleable. But it can still decimate a Florida fish farm and just eat fish all day long. Now we're going to go into the cavern. As I mentioned, this is just outside of Brandon, Manitoba. And this entire exhibit was built because Dave's collection started getting just out, over, out, out of control. This is a saw scaled viper. A lot of the venomous animals, like this is a cane braid rattlesnake, but they're going to hide most of the time during the day, so you may not see them. They're pretty reclusive animals. There's a hide right there for it. His wife Candy mentioned that they're expecting a large shipment coming in from Indonesia shortly and possibly an American one. So this here is a Madagascar giant hognose snake. This is a rear fang. I don't know if it'd be classified as venomous or not, but it's a much larger one. This is a blue tegu, a tupinambus tegu. So this one is actually from Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, and Paraguay. Your favorite of mine, he's probably in the hide, is a western diamondback rattlesnake. A 
Merlin's a bit of a spitter, so uh, his cage glass is a little bit messy, but uh, Merlin is a very, very angry, I don't know if you can hear him, but he's, he's, he's definitely hissing at us, and he is a very large eastern diamondback rattlesnake. And this is the largest of all the rattlesnakes, the largest of the crotalids. They get far too big for most people. This is a Reynolds python from Australia. It's one of the types of carpet pythons, so they're semi-arboreal. A large gopher snake. Gopher snakes are actually distributed all throughout North America. So this gopher snake, you could actually find this even in far western Saskatchewan, going into Alberta, and then going south into Montana and Wyoming. Kind of desert and scrub type habitat. This is Varanus Nilotticus. This is the water monitor, or Nile monitor. Just a baby still. They'll get to be about six feet in size. He's currently sleeping. We're not gonna wake him up. But a beautiful monitor, and a very popular one in the pet trade, because they're easy to start with. This cage is for the black and white spinning cobra. Now, this will be the hide this is also the safe box. So this is how they control the animals when they have to do things such as feeding or cleaning or maintenance of the environments, is that they, 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 the animal's generally always gonna be in their hide, and then he slowly closes that lid and locks it before he does any maintenance in the environment and to make sure that he stays safe. And one of the more dangerous, uh, probably the most, one of the most dangerous snakes that he has here is the black mamba. This is a very, very old one. It's huge. They can get up to about 14 feet in size, and this one is probably all of at least 10 or 12. This is an African elapid. Most people associate them thinking they're black mamas that they should be black, but they aren't in fact black. It's kind of a dull brown but the inside of the mouth of this animal, should you ever be the one to see it, is jet black inside. Usually at that time, it's usually gonna to be too late for you. A nice large blood python. There may be more than one. They're in their hide. It's a common one in the pet trade, but they generally are always very, very aggressive. They're not one known for being calmed down through handling but very, very impressive color-wise. Very short-bodied and heavy. So the hallways that I'm in, this is the, basically how the reptile gardens came to be. The collection just kept growing in, in their house and stuff, and his wife Candy said, okay, this is getting out of hand. We got some daughters coming, we got some children, let's get your collection, let's put it somewhere a bit more proper. So they ended up, because they live near Brandon, right near Brandon is, a, is an area called Shiloh, and that's one of Canadian's large armed forces bases, training centers. And years back, the Germans had a contract, and the Germans were here for X amount of years. When that contract ran out, they didn't have extra buildings, and their buildings were called H huts. And that's how Dave acquired this building. He had to dismantle it and move it to where it's already staged, and then he built this whole thing inside here. And it's continuously growing because of his collection of crocodilians. He's got some pretty seriously impressive animals for crocodilians, but they're all back in much larger enclosures. So we're gonna go and take a look at everything else, see what we see. On the left side, when you walk into the first hallway, is a lot of very large, spacious enclosures. And these ones here, this one here is the African rock python. Very, very large. It's got a large pool area, drains, easy to maintain. All the maintenance for this pool is all done from underneath. So they can, they can fill it and drain it, everything from underneath. And then you go below, there's all the service area. But the African rock python is actually way up top there in the trees. And I don't think there's any way possible that I could even get to seeing him. Maybe you can see him there, but he's a pretty big boy. Then the other things that we've got here is the next one here is an animal they didn't have years ago when I was here last. And these are amethystine pythons. This is the largest species of snakes. It's a python from Australia. They're also known as scrub pythons. And there's actually two of them in here. And again, they are arboreal as well. So they're way up top there as well. They're smaller ones now. And they've got their pools and their, their different areas. But this is a nice enclosure for them to be able to grow into. 
This one is an African dwarf crocodile. Comes from West Africa, and it only generally gets to be about five feet in size. So this is a very, very big boy or girl, and this is Doc. Doc is easily all of probably five, six feet in size. Like the large, big pool, it's all made out of concrete, like a zoo exhibit. It's all drainable, easily to maintain. Everything's out of concrete, so they can come in here and just pressure wash the whole thing and keep everything clean. Very, very impressive. If you go further down, you start seeing all sorts of different type of mouse. This is a black throat monitor, and he's probably all of four or five feet in size. Nice big enclosure. His name is Diego. Some different conclusions. Now, they recently had one of their long-term exhibit animals that was over 50 years or so uh, pass away uh, from, uh, from, I believe it was stomach cancer. So they're having to flip a lot of animals around right now. So then their last big enclosure there, you see right at the end there that's empty right now, that used to hold Jojo, and he was like the star attraction that everybody knew here. So a lot of animals are gonna be moving. So this one here is just chilling until the new home's ready. And this is Hank and they call him a baby American alligator. Hank is decidedly larger than a baby, but uh, he's definitely not full grown either. And Hank's gonna get much bigger, but Hank's gonna get a much bigger enclosure soon too. Now anybody that may be local to say Winnipeg, Manitoba, or has ever been to Winnipeg, Manitoba and gone to the local zoo, the Assiniboine Park Zoo, uh, Westman Reptile Gardens has partnered with them many times over the years and basically put animals in there on display on loan. And these, these are dwarf crocodiles as well. And these ones here, actually the two that are in the water right now, they were actually both on display uh, at the zoo. <laughs> Hank was raised here right from a little baby. He was imported with proper paperwork. This is a CITES animal. It's one of the most challenging animals to get into the country is the American alligator because of the paperwork required. But he was imported uh, legally with all the paperwork as a little baby and he is now eight years old and he's all of six, seven feet in size. Now anybody that may be local to say Winnipeg, Manitoba, or has ever been to Winnipeg, Manitoba and gone to the local zoo, the Assiniboine Park Zoo, uh, Westman Reptile Gardens has partnered with them many times over the years and basically put animals in there on display on loan. And these, these are dwarf crocodiles as well. And these ones here, actually the two that are in the water right now, they were actually both on display uh, at the zoo. Now what's really funny is, you're going back probably about, I don't know, about my daughter Riley. How old are you now, Riley? 13. Riley's 13. When Riley was only about one or two, I used to drive for my territory for my sales calls, and I used to drive to the next province over every single month for work. And Riley would come with me as with her mother and our pets, our dogs. And I remember stopping here at the Westman Reptile Gardens and seeing Nile crocodiles these babies that I'm going to show you now, they were only about six or eight inches long and they were in about a 70 gallon aquarium. Now that's probably about, you know, like, I don't know, 10, 10 years ago or so, 10, 12 years ago now, something like that. Let's see how big they are now. They're very messy, they're large, there's two of them, and they are nine, 10 foot maybe, including the tail, and they are only maybe a third grown. So how old are these guys? Right before we opened. Yeah. Yeah. And we're in our 16th year of being The true Nile crocodile. The only thing bigger than a Nile crocodile is a saltwater crocodile from Australia. These are absolute monsters. And typical of crocodiles, they have that wonderful personality, that ever so gentle, I just want to cuddle you with my mouth type of wonderful, wonderful personality. This is another American alligator. This one's name is Mikey, but Mikey is actually a girl. So maybe it's Michelle now, I don't know. Mikey, Michelle, whatever it is, she's a beautiful animal. She's probably about seven feet in size. Nice big enclosure for her as well. And I think Mikey, and the one you haven't seen, Abner. What was the third one? Hank. Hank, I think they'll become the, the new showstoppers 
for the Westman Reptile Gardens. These are smooth fronted cavens. They're much smaller. Just as snappy. And their, their environment is just a temporary home again. That's why it looks a lot smaller than maybe some may think it should be. But these were just babies that were raised up to this size and they're going to be moving around. So just temporary housing for now. You can see the glass isn't the easiest to look through as we're just doing some maintenance and these animals splash around a lot and muck up their aquarium. Look at that cute little smile. This is Hector. He's a savanna monitor also called a Bosque Monitor. And it's usually one that you commonly see in the pet trade. I don't know if they're, I don't know if in Manitoba we're legally allowed to have them anymore, or at least in the city of Winnipeg. I'm not certain in regards to the bylaws because there's often been changes. But this one's almost full size and they're usually fairly docile and easily to handle. And he's got a very, very large, spacious uh, environment. It's all concrete. So all the dioramas and everything that are present there, they're all painted on, they're sealed, so they could come in here and easily and just pressure wash the whole environment up and quick and easy to do maintenance, which is very, very important when you're maintaining a collection of this size. 